Hello everyone, so this time I would like to share a video on how to simulate a perfect hemline. So this tip is one of my favorite because it has really improved my overall workflow when I create puffy jackets. Uh, before I came across this method, I used to use a lot of pins and added small pattern pieces, did strengthening, all kinds of things to get um, this hemline straight. However, with this method, it became very, very easy. So I will show you step-by-step step how to use it. And um, in general, as you can see in this puffy, puffy jacket, um, this kind of hemline is pretty natural. And even in real garments, you can see these types of hemlines. So this visualization is not wrong whatsoever. Um, however, it might be that you work with people who are really perfectionists and they enjoy very straight hemlines. I had that experience um, when I used to work for a company. They always wanted, you know, these right kind of looking hemlines. Even though in real life the garment doesn't create this type of hemline, but uh, you know, they wanted it, so I had to visualize it. And the perfect hemline that I'm talking about is something like this. So really straight, not wobbly at all, and especially at the back. Um, in this case, you can see here it's kind of lifting up quite a lot. Um, yeah, so usually they wanted this like very straight clean look and if I hide the avatar and um, do the front render often the back hemline would appear and it always had to be straight just so that it looks better. Um, whether or not it has any effect on anything, I don't think there is any effect. Um, however, of course, uh, when you have those clean lines, the, the, the simulation in general looks better. So yeah, in this case, it's a very simple um, fix because as you can see here, I have elastic at the hem of my puffer. So this is the easiest case, um, in my opinion. So here, as you can see, if I show these extra pattern pieces, these are the pattern pieces that I use to help my simulations. And I not only use them for hem, but also for sleeve hem, also for collars sometimes, as well as uh, hood openings. Basically, any case where you need clean line, you can try to use um, this kind of method. Uh, so these two pieces I will uh, activate and then you can see in simulation how easily it fixes this hemline without even having to add any pins and move this. In this case, this is possible because the elastic makes the hem lay very close to the avatar. So that's why these two pattern pieces also lay very close to the avatar. And that's why they can uh, create this very clean look. So as you can see, these pieces are just simple rectangles. And in this case, um, because the hemline is gathered, I picked the 3D line length, so 460 millimeter as the length of my rectangle, as you can see here. Because you don't want to create the rectangle um, the same length as your 2D pattern, because you don't want it to be gathered, it has to be straight. And another thing, these rectangles should have um, at least five or six centimeter of height. If you go lower, it might be a more difficult to get that clean look. Then another thing that you have to keep in mind is the fabric. So for these pieces, I usually call them help. Uh, for these pieces, I use very stiff fabric. So the stretch values, I don't know why here I have 87, but usually you can put 70, 80, it doesn't really matter. What matters is the bending values. So make sure you put them on 100, buckling ratio on zero and buckling stiffness on 90. And here I don't really change anything else. And the good thing about this method is that you can keep them on particle distance 20. You don't have to reduce particle distance. And once you set them, you can just freeze them and you don't have to simulate them ever again. So basically that's the trick. And in this type of puffer or even just a simple jacket, it always gives a very good result. And when it comes to sleeves, if you set one sleeve, you can copy and paste this position to the other sleeve and it will um, mirror the position and you can also just freeze them and never simulate them again. About animation, I haven't tried myself and I assume if you simulate this in animation, 
maybe it's not going to look very natural however I have not tried so if you want of course you can try it and if you want you can give me feedback in comments whether or not this works for animation um, for now I will not try it but if I have time I will try it as well and let you know so another case I wanted to show you this time is this type of case what to do when you don't have elastic at hemline it's a little bit more complex you have to work a little bit more but also it's not that bad so as you can see here I have no elastic added so this is pretty normal type of hemline that appears in 3d when you have this type of um, buffer with um, also like these horizontal quilt lines also the hemline heavily depends on your quilt lines as well so not always it will look like this however let's try to make it look straight and nice so first of all i don't need these sleeves to be simulated so i will freeze them as well as i will freeze um, the collar and also these pieces of course i don't need but zipper i want to be simulated okay now i will create these rectangles that will help my simulation so here i will measure so 650 and the rectangle will be 650 in width and I will do the same 6 centimeter in height. Okay, and then I will add this help fabric. It's the same fabric as I showed you. And then Control c Control d so I have two pieces. And now I will do the sewing. I will sew it to the inner layer. So front, back. And here I have to do front because the inner layer was created by layer clone um, by layer clone under so that's why some um, front doesn't have the linked sewing so here I have my rectangles I can try to do superimpose side and see whether that works but usually it goes inside which is not what we want sometimes if you do superimpose over and then superpose side it figures it out but yeah, not in this case so then I will use arrangement points and arrange it somewhere like this and I will increase the offset just to help that simulation okay and also no, I, I can keep it at least maybe top I will freeze so it doesn't move okay and then simulate Oh, and I also want to reduce particle distance because doing this on particle distance 5 will be very very slow so 10 is much better okay and then one thing that is helpful is to also add like some extra pattern here not pattern extra length here where the zipper is sometimes I don't create it like in this case here I didn't feel the need to add it but if I see a case like this I will definitely add it so that I can sew it so basically here I can see my zipper is one centimeter plus seven so it will be 12 on each side so offset as pattern outline 12 so basically this part I add is half of my zipper and binding and I will sew it in center front like this if you see a need if something weird is happening here you can also sew um, your binding and zipper to the top part but uh, I usually don't do it and also I want to sew the backs together and then I want to add some shrinkage to these uh, two pattern pieces because when you use the 100% shrinkage um, then the, the output is not looking very good and you still want some wrinkles here as well so that's why i usually put 95 or 90 so i will maybe stick with 95 this time but here you can decide which which look you prefer do you want the more gathered look or you want it to be more straight so if it's 90 you will have a lot of wrinkles if it's 95 then you know maybe a few you can even go lower. I will put it at 95. 
and now I will do some fine tuning on only on one side so what I do I select the pin box and I pin down um, all the points of center front and center back so this is center front you can see and then center back I also pin down like this and then with these uh, I control the position of the center front and the center back and another thing is um, I don't know if that's necessary um, but I like to do it I like to create additional pattern piece and then with the world coordinate gizmo by holding down shift I rotate it by 90 degrees like that and then I place it right in the middle of the avatar this helps me to find where exactly is the center of the avatar if you have very good eye you probably can tell by just looking at it but um, I really need this helping help help pattern and then I deactivate it so it, I don't simulate it accidentally and let's check so to get it completely in the center I usually yeah, press 2 and then by holding oh, press 2 zoom in and then hold down shift and move it up and then it doesn't move to any side it just goes straight up and then I go to face oh, this face is very very black so I'll put it back on white in. and then I try to put I zoom in more and I try to put the pattern piece in the middle of the nose so now I have my center so here there are many um, things you can control with this so first of all you can tr control how far to the front um, the center front is going if you like this kind of look it's totally fine you can leave it in its natural state however I usually like to pull it a little bit back by using uh, the gizmo the blue arrow like that and I pull it down a little bit and then also check out the zipper how that looks maybe I need to add some pins um, to help it out I think I will pull it down a little bit more so this also really depends on your preference what kind of look you want to achieve so for me I like this kind of slightly curved but then goes down straight look this kind of look in my opinion is okay and of course the more you will pull it down the less puff there will be here so of course you have to be mindful about these kind of details as well sometimes I also like to change to fitting accurate it tends to help um, straighten out the zipper and now I go back to normal simulation mode well maybe this is this is okay should be fine and then for the back I do the same so I make sure my pins are right in the center back so I move them and I use this pattern to help me and this pattern that I added is guiding me basically and then of course I try to make it straight like this and here as well I have to decide what I want to do I think I will pull it down a little bit and as you notice here like um, especially the last puff always is much bigger than these ones and you can see I have also differences front and back like here is much more puff even though the pressure values are the same there's a lot of fine-tuning that goes into a perfect puffer this is in no way a perfect puffer okay well something like that basically this can be a very quick process you can do it very quickly or you can you know just take your time and, and see what works what doesn't work and um, that's how you can achieve like a really good result I think and very natural one and then once the center front and center back is more or less where I want it to be I can add some individual pins here and adjust the shape and I only add pins to this extra pattern piece and you can really perfect the hemline like that and on the other side you don't don't have to do the same thing 
because I can just delete this one and then control C, control D and copy it to the other side. And usually I don't even touch it, I just freeze it. But um, what I have noticed is that the front matches perfectly and in general I think the back should match perfectly as well, but somehow it is always creating this kind of gap. So I just move the pins closer to the original one uh, just because I don't want to add that uh, I don't want to keep that gap just because the sewing will definitely try to make that gap so you don't want that error so better um, move it manually and then I freeze both and never touch them again so that's basically oi. all right so first I have to add the missing sewing. Yep, I forgot about that because it is sewn to the lining. And yeah, I think it's perfectly symmetrical. It's exactly the shape that I decided that I want, that works for me. And yeah, it looks very good and very clean. And let's check how it looks when I increase particle distance. And here you don't have to worry about increasing and changing particle distance because that frozen part it can stay at particle distance 20 and it can stay frozen it will not do anything bad to your garment even if you change uh, particle distance of your garment yeah it looks pretty good and one last step that i wanted to do um, Whenever you do sewing, uh, there is fold strength added. So by default, it's five. So I usually put it on zero because this sewing um, affects a little bit the drape of the layer where it's sewn to. As you can see there, you, you can see there's like some, some kind of bend happening. And once I remove this one as well, once I remove the fold strength, you can see it releases so that's quite important maybe not in this case because that is lining um, but if you sew it to the front piece then you don't want that awkward bend or the lining is visible and uh, maybe in some other cases you notice that there's some weird bend happening when you use this method that means you have to switch off fold strength and here you have a very perfect hemline whether or not that looks natural <laughs> really depends on the person but um, yeah basically this is the method that I very much like to use okay so this is it for the video thank you for watching and have a good day bye